Hey everyone, welcome back to Dan's Chess Lounge. Today we're going to be covering an opening called the Rubenstein Attack. Now this opening comes out of the Queen's Gambit, Declined, and it's for attacking players, players who like to play with the initiative. You, know, you throw all your pieces at the enemy's king, and it's a really fun opening to play. But surprisingly, it's not played a lot. I don't face it a lot. I don't see it a lot in tournaments. Uh, I don't see it when I'm looking at other people's games. So it's it's kind of a hidden gem. I wouldn't say hidden gem because it is played. But um, it's quite dangerous, though. It's dubious, I guess you could, I guess you can say. Because while you're throwing all your pieces at the enemy king, they're throwing all their pieces at your king as well. So it's a very dynamic and, in, and imbalanced opening. You guys will definitely enjoy it. I encourage you guys to give it a try after you check out the video. So let's go ahead and get into it and see what it's all about here. D4, D5, C4. This is the start of the Queen's Gambit. You know, the Queen's Gambit for white is all about quick development and getting a, a positional, uh, positionally better game, uh, getting control of the center as well. If black ever takes the pawn on C4, then white will have two pawns in the center. He'll, he'll be able to develop fast. So it's not necessarily about a quick, like, mating net or a mating attack that you'll get from the gambit. E6, queen's gambit declined. Black reinforces the pawn in the center there with e6, but the downfall to that is that the light squared bishop on c8 is now blocked in. So now it's kind of a bad bishop. Knight c3, knight f6. Black is trying to entice white to capture on d5, because if he captures on d5, then that the e6 pawn is going to no longer be there. And then black's light square bishop will no longer be a bad bishop. Bishop g5. It threatens to pin. It threatens to win the pawn on d5 there by pinning the, the bishop to the. By pinning the knight there to the queen. Knight bd7. Now, knight f3 is the, the main line here. I wanted to show you guys. A move here don't play C takes D5 here thinking that hey the knight there is pinned on F6 because it will run right into a trap E takes D5 knight takes knight takes knight so black just took white's knight there for the pawn bishop takes queen white may think they're getting a free queen there, but no, because the next move here is bishop b4 check. The only way to, to get out of the check is to block with your own queen. And now black captures the bishop, and then white plays e3. There's nothing better to do here where because he was pinned. He couldn't move his queen either way. Now black finally captures bishop takes d2, king takes and black is up a piece pretty much right here. He got he got one white got one pawn for the knight. So so don't fall for that trap right there. Uh, if you need to see it again, rewind the video, stop it, rewind it. Make sure you don't fall for that trap there. So knight f3 is the book move here. Develop your your knight Bishop e7, it breaks the pin. e3, releases the light square bishop there on f1. And it also allows white to castle king side if he chooses. Black castles. And now here's the move that uh, initiates the Rubenstein attack. It's queen c2 right here. The normal book line is, is rook c1, or you could play uh, bishop d3 and castle kingside but the rubenstein attack is all about queen c2 and the reason for that is that white wants to castle queenside and then he's going to throw all of his pieces towards the black king now this is uh named after 
the great Akiba Rubenstein. And uh, if you guys know about him, he's he's famous for being a great player back in the day. But one of his, uh, I guess you can say, he's known for having one of the greatest minds when it comes to end games, in particular rook end games. He's a rook in he was a rook in game specialist and a rook in game genius. So if you guys want to learn all about rook in games, make sure you study Akiba Rubenstein. And you know he has tons of openings named after him too, in in many many different openings. So yeah, so queen c two. Remember that guys in the castle queen side. So that's the start of the opening there. Let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, the game that we're following here is actually his game, Akiba Rubenstein's game against Richard Tiekman in Vienna in 1908. So the way that Black handled it in this game, he played b6 because his light square bishop doesn't look like it's going to come out on the on the king side diagonal anytime soon. So he he plans on Fianchetto on his bishop to b7 or either a6 one of the two a lot of times you see the bishop coming to a6 and then uh and when white captures here it's going to be a lot of pressure uh where the bishop can take the life square bishop on f1 and then that's going to destroy white's ability to capture uh to castle kingside but that those are just some general ideas that you see. So you had C takes D in the game. Uh, white now White finally exchanges on the D five square. Now that he sees that Black is going to fee and kettle his bishop here. E takes D five. Bishop comes out to D three. Now White can still castle kingside if he wanted to. So really that depends on your flavor. It depends on your speed your style, you know, your, your, um, how aggressive you want to be. You know, if you want to throw everything, you know, at, you want to throw everything in, you know, but the kitchen sink at your opponent, then capsule queen side and then launch all your, your pawns, your knights, bishops, you know, you have this diagonal here. So, you know, you can, it's almost just, you know, the position is, is playing itself out on the board, really. You know? Bishop b7, queenside castles, c5, black plays a break move here, a strike towards the center, and it's just good principle. He wants to open up the position, especially now that white's king is right in front of the pawns where he's going to open it up at. White starts his attack, h4. C4 here, bishop goes to f5, rook e8, putting this rook on a nice uh, file for if that file opens up. Bishop takes f6, knight takes, and g4, uh, storming the king side right here. Bishop d6, g5. White is pushing his pawns towards the black king. Now, the black king and, and pieces need to try to stop this attack or else he's just going to get steamrolled it's really like a caveman attack at this point it's just all out full of salt so the knight goes to e4 here which is actually a good defensive move because it blocks this diagonal here because that diagonal is very weak so th this is kind of like like a thorn, you know, it's or like an interference move. It, it blocks the battery that was going on here, pointing towards the h7 square. h5, queen e7, rook dg1. Everything is looking beautiful for a white to just bust open the black king side. a6. Now a6 is way too slow. It's way too late in the game to be thinking about storming your pawns over here like this. It is way too slow at this point. That's not going to work. And, and see, so you have a beautiful bishop sack right here to rip open the black king side. King takes, g6 check, king goes back. Knight takes, e4, pawn takes. 
eight six. Look at White Spawns just all up in Black's grill at this point. F6 is played in the game. You guys might be wondering how come Black couldn't take the knight on F3. If Black takes the knight on F3, then you have G takes F, Queen takes, H takes G, and now this is just too much for a Black to, to handle. You've got the rook coming to H8. You've got the queen coming to H7. And then actually this is like a forced mate in 6, I believe. But it's just too much for black to to handle this type of an attack so he doesn't take the knight there he plays f6 to try to to block h takes g7 now he finally takes the knight on f3 he just couldn't resist the temptation was just too much for him to resist but that is not a good move that's a blunder there because now you have rook h8 check King takes on g7 and now rook h7. Now that skewers the king and the queen, and it's going to be lights out for, for black. I wouldn't have surpri been surprised if black resigned at, right here. King goes to g8, and then he didn't even take his queen right away. He played queen f5, still looking for checkmates. It's just nothing. Black is just crippled his position is paralyzed at this point there's nothing he can do c3 still trying to get a little bit of counter activity going uh with with some type of of um attack he wants to play c takes b2 hope maybe his maybe the king will take and then the bishop will go here after the pawn takes just trying to get something going before he gets checkmated basically Rook finally takes the queen, and then Tiekman resigned right here. It's, it, the game is over. It's hopeless. You have the rook coming this way. You you have uh, the queen taken here. Then it's going to put pressure on the bishop. I mean, black's going to get checkmated here very, very soon. If he doesn't want to checkmate him, he could take all of his pieces then. It, it's really up to white at this point. Black doesn't have any counterplay at all. This... This here is just going to get exchanged. The pawn is going to take. And the king is going to take it right back. Then his attack is going to be over. So, so guys, that was the Rubenstein attack. Uh, the main point to remember is that it's the queen's gambit declined. But then white plays queen to c2 and then castles queen side. From there, you can just launch all of your pieces on the king side towards uh, your opponent's king. So it's, it's, you don't have to remember any specific moves or a move order. You just remember the idea and the theme of this opening here. Once you cast queen queenside, launch all your pieces towards the, the enemy king. So, Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the, the lecture today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time.